Good evening. We're ready to begin. The Planning Commission meeting is called to order. This meeting has been properly noticed and posted in compliance with the open meeting laws. We are live on KCLV Channel 2, and this meeting will be rebroadcast Saturday at 10 a.m. on the following Monday at midnight, Tuesday at 5 a.m., and Thursday at 6 p.m. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Chair Truesdale? Present. Vice Chair Ellsworth? Here. Commissioner Trowbridge? Here. Commissioner Quinn? Commissioner Goins? Present. Commissioner Evans? Present. Commissioner Flangus? Here. Thank you. I call your, order, your attention to the information printed in our agendas concerning actions that are, and the appeal and review process if appropriate. Please read this carefully and if you have any questions, staff is available. Also, second page of the agenda contains our rules of conduct. We appreciate you adhering to these rules so we can have a smooth meeting. We have a motion on the minutes for the July 29th Planning Commission meeting. So move for approval. If there are no other comments or questions, please cast your vote. Thank you. And those are approved with uh, Ms. Quinn yet to arrive. Let's move on to our housekeeping items. Are there any items that, com that commissioner staff, applicant, or members of the public would like to pull forward for action? Mr. Chairman, uh, item 22, the applicant has requested this item be withdrawn without prejudice. Okay. And on my report, it had seven. Is, there, is that still going to go for That's going to be heard? Seven is still scheduled for tonight. Okay. That's fine. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to press the poll items 8 and 12 from the one motion, one vote. Okay. All righty. Can we, uh, is there anybody here wishing to speak on item 22, uh, which has been re requested to be withdrawn without prejudice? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, motion. Uh, move for the items as uh, the, the two items to be pulled or from this is, is just well. just item 22. Oh, just 20. It's up. So move for approval. Okay. And please cast your vote. And that is approved. There are no consent items. Now we go to uh, one motion, one vote. The following item are items that may be considered by one motion, one vote. They are considered routine, non-public, and public hearing items. All public hearing items, non-public hearing items will be opened at one time. Any person requesting an application or a member of the public or a member of the Planning Commission not in agreement with the conditions and standard conditions for the application recommended by staff should request to have that item pulled from this portion of the agenda. Items. 6, TMP 38785, applicant owner, the Howard Hughes Corporation, for a 34 lot single family residential subdivision. Item 7, RQR 38940, applicant, Clear Channel Outdoor, owner, Rice Board, Paul and Hay Trust, Hay Trust, request uh, for review approval of a special use permit for a 14 by 48 foot off premise sign. Item 8 will be pulled from the, this portion of the agenda. Item 9, SUP 38767, applicant, Cardivan Company, DBA 9965, owner Plaza South, Sun City LLC, for a gaming restricted within an existing 14,000 square foot general merchandise store. Item 10, SUP 38806, applicant, Challenger School, owner Bab Investments, LLC, to add a private school primary first grade to an existing 19,722 square foot child care facility. 
Item 11, SUP 38815, applicant from diapers to dorms, owner Barbara Ann Alufi, trust et al. for a proposed 1,400 square foot secondhand dealer children's items. Item 12 is going to be pulled from the agenda. Item 13, SUP 38842, applicant, the Lady Silva, Inc., owner, retail, 130, Inc., for a proposed 3,937 square foot urban lounge with outdoor dining area. Item 14, SUP 38864, applicant, Aslan Bail Bonds, owner, Charleston Towers, LLC, for a 1,100 square foot bail bond service. And item 15, SUP 38865, applicant owner, MGG LLC, for a proposed 7,940 square foot urban lounge with outdoor dining area within an existing restaurant. Uh, these items were noticed as public hearing. If there's anybody wishing to speak on these items, please come forward. See no one close public hearing. Uh, move for approval of all items except for numbers 8 and 12, which have been pulled. Okay. If there are no other comments, please cast your vote. And those are approved. Items 6, 7, and 14 will go to City Council on October 6th, and items 9, 10, 11, 13, and 15 are final action unless appealed within 10 days. Thank you. Now we go to item 8, SUP 38239, three, applicant, Walgreen Company, owner, as ASRV, General WLLC, et al., for a 74-square-foot Accessory package liquor off sale use within an existing 15,120 square foot retail establishment at 900 North Rancho Drive. Staff. Mr. Chairman, uh, the proposed retail establishment with accessory package liquor off sale use is permitted in the C1 zoning district with the approval of a special use permit. Uh, the location does not have any church and schools, child care facilities, or city parks within the required 400 foot distance separation radius. And the proposed use can be conducted in a manner that is harmonious and compatible with the uses in the existing site and with the commercial uses on adjacent properties. For all these reasons, staff recommends approval with conditions. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Jennifer Roberts of Lionel Sawyer and Collins appearing on behalf of Walgreens. Um, this is an application for less than 100 square feet. Uh, uh, accessory package alcohol. Uh, it meets the separa separation requirements and staff has recommended approval and we accept all conditions that staff has recommended. We ask that you follow the staff's recommendation. Okay. Here this was advertised in public hearing. Was there anybody who wished to speak on this item? Please come forward. Seeing no one close public hearing, uh, Commissioner Goins. Mr. Chairman, uh, just to be consistent with um, my voting on these Walgreens um, application for liquor, again, uh, it's just my feeling that uh, their primary product is, is, is a drugstore, and uh, I just don't see that it's proper to have, have liquor in there, although it's only 74 square feet. Uh, I think in this area there are enough um, establishments that are selling liquor. Uh, even we have a major hotel to the, to the west of this youth or to the north of this youth, and I think there's uh, ample liquor in the area. So, you know, they always say... Uh, uh, drugs and alcohol don't mix, so let's not serve alcohol out of the drugstore. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if there are no other comments, Commissioners? I, I have one Commissioner comment. Kent? I apologize to everybody for being late. Um, I, it was just one of those days. But um, I disagree with my fellow Commissioner here because I believe that if we don't um, allow uh, these Walgreens to have liquor, it's going to end up an empty box building very soon because people are going to go other places. Excuse me for my cold. That's another reason I'm late. So um, it's rare that I disagree with my friend here, but I am disagreeing with him tonight. So thank you for that. Thank you. If there are no other comments, uh, motion? Uh, Commissioner Trudeau? Oh, 
Well, I was just going to comment that I, I agree with Commissioner Quinn. I think the amount of square footage that's involved in this issue uh, doesn't really change the nature of what's going on, and it will allow them to remain competitive with uh, other uh, pharmacies that are really more than pharmacies. They're more general stores nowadays, and so I'm going to uh, uh, support the, the staff's recommendation for approval. And that's a motion? That would, if I'm allowed to make the motion, then yes, I would make a motion in regards to item number eight, uh, special use permit 38-239 to approve uh, the request subject to the conditions as stated. Okay. If there are no other comments, please cast your vote. She's locked in. I'll vote you that's showing yes. And that, move, and that motion is approved and is final action in the absence of any appeal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And if I may, for the record, a correction item six, the tentative map is final action and does not go on to the city council. Thank you. Now we go to item 12, SUP. 38824 applicant, the Beat LLC, owner Expert Inc., for a proposed 1,900 square foot tavern limited establishment within an existing restaurant at 520 East Fremont Street. Mr. Chairman, a tavern limited is permitted in the C2 zoning district within the entertainment district with the approval of a special use permit. Uh, the, ta the tavern limited will be located within an existing restaurant with the restaurant operating from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and the lounge operating from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. Staff recommends approval with conditions as the proposed tavern limited meets all conditions of the downtown centennial plan in Title 1904 and will have no adverse impact on the surrounding community. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Michael Cornthwaite. I'm speaking on behalf of the Beat LLC and the Beat Coffee House. Okay. This was advertised at a public hearing. Anybody here wish to speak on this item, please come forward. Seeing no one close uh, seeing no one close public hearing. You've read all the staff's conditions and you're in agreement with them? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, any questions, Commissioner? Mr. Chairman, just want to get an understanding of what the gentleman is proposing to do. From what I understand, you're currently a coffee house, and during the, the open, what are your hours of operation currently? Uh, <clears throat> currently, we're open from at 7 a.m. every day until 7 p.m., with the exception of Friday and Saturday, where we stay open until 10 p.m. So we're serving uh, coffee, um, soft drinks, uh, sandwiches, breakfast, um, what, what the proposed idea is is to serve beer and wine in the evening hours and to provide more of a, an entertainment uh, type venue with live music, DJ, uh, spoken word, uh, open mic, uh, all those sort of things that are, are not really that existent in the entertainment district right now but would add something to the district in the future. So you're going to serve breakfast and, t breakfast and snacks until about 7 p.m., then you're going to convert it to a tavern? Uh, well, I mean, it, it, it really doesn't fit in to, the, uh, to any sort of uh, mold of, of being a tavern. I wouldn't call it a tavern. I'd call it a coffee house in the evening serving beer and wine. So no hard liquor? Correct. We, we have the ability to have hard liquor, but really that isn't in keeping with the theme and the feeling of the entire place. So it'll be very much a laid-back coffee house uh, sort of environment. If anyone's familiar with Stumptown Coffee in Portland, uh, it's very much along the same lines as what they do, morning until evening. So I was reading your backup. You said after 7 p.m., nobody under, under the age 21, of 21 will be allowed in the right. establishment? Correct. How are you going to police that? Uh, the, normal, the normal ways, uh, security. 
checking IDs. Uh, I have currently a, a cocktail lounge in the entertainment district, and I would police it the same way, which is, is through security and checking IDs. So what happens if a family comes in at 6.45 to eat, and it's after 7 o'clock, and they've got kids with them? How are you going to? Well, I'd probably just uh, address the issue right away and say you're welcome to take your food to go, but at 7 o'clock we're not allowed to have any uh, minors in the establishment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, any other comments? Uh, Commissioner Evans? I, yeah, I just wanted <clears throat> to say I'm familiar and maybe I can uh, alleviate any of your concerns, uh, uh, Commissioner Goins. I've been there a number of times. Um, they've taken an old building, I think it was the old J.C. Binney building, right. and um, they've created art galleries um, and some killer sandwiches and great coffee. And uh, Thank you. I, what they're doing, I think, at night is in keeping with the rest of the entertainment district. Mr. Cornway owns the, uh, the downtown cocktail room right around the corner. Probably one of the best things that has occurred down, downtown in decades since probably reggae and blues. Um, it's becoming an institution, I think, in Las Vegas and people in, in Los Angeles and all the blogs are all talking about it. They take cocktails to a new level. There's no gaming in there, and so it fosters a sense of, of uh, community and camaraderie and a little bit of conversation rather than clanking of nickels. Um, across the street, I see Mr. Nolan and, and Mr. Epstein with the El Cortez. They did a remarkable job. On weekends, the entertainment district is just happening, and I think this is a, a really good fit for that. Um, and I trust Mr. Cornthwaite's ability. Uh, I think he's too savvy of a businessman to jeopardize his liquor license and anything else for allowing underage kids to drink. So this absolutely has my enthusiastic support. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. If there are no other comments or questions, motion. Mr. Chairman, move the follow staff's recommendation, subject all conditions. Okay, there's a motion for approval. Uh, please cast your vote. And that is approved, and that is final action in the absence of an appeal. Great. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Now we go to item 16, our uh, public hearing items 16 through 20, which are related items. Item 16, GPA 38579, applicant owner uh, Pataka P. and Tazy R. Miyahari. That's cool. Uh, request from DR Desert Rural residential to SC service commercial at 6640 West Craig Avenue. Companion item ZON 3858 uh, from RE residential estates to C1 limited commercial. Item 18 VAR 38576 to allow a 10 foot setback where, from the west and east property lines and a 20 foot setback from the north property line where residential JC standards require a minimum of 81 feet from the west property line and 84 feet from the east property and north property lines. Item 19, SUP 38574 for a proposed 47 bed, 1,000 or 17,777 square foot convalescent care facility nursing. And item 20, SDR 38577 for a proposed two story 17,777 square foot convalescent care facility nursing home and a waiver of the perimeter buffer standards to allow four feet along the south perimeter where 15 feet is required, zero feet along the portion of the west and east perimeters where eight feet is required and zero feet between the sidewalk and back of curb where five feet is required. Mr. Chairman, the existing single-family residence at the subject site uh, is proposed to be converted into a convalescent care facility. 
The proposed change in land use is appropriate as it is situated on a primary arterial street that contains commercial uses to the west and in proximity to the east. Staff therefore recommends approval of the general plan amendment and the rezoning request. As proposed, the site will be overbuilt as is evidenced by the need for landscape waivers and residential adjacency variances. In addition, the applicant has presented no evidence of a unique or extraordinary circumstance pursuant to Title 1918-070 that would substantiate the requested variance. Therefore, staff recommends denial of the associated variance, special use permit, and site development plan review. If all applications are denied, the site will remain residentially zoned with an approved 10-bed group residential care facility use. Please note that additional protests were received for these items since publication. Thank you. Good evening. Hi. My name is Paitak Miyahira, and I am the owner of this property, and I'm representing myself and my wife. Oh. Hello. My name is Paitak Miyahira, and I currently live at 8455 Stange Avenue, and I am the owner of this property along with my wife. And I am hoping to get the items 16 and 17 approved, and I'm hoping for 18, 19, and 20 to be approved. Um, so I just would like to hear your comments on what you think. Okay. You've read all the staff's conditions. Um, I have, and, and I understand what they're saying. And um, to be honest, I'd like to have some time for items 18, 19, and 20 to actually see what we can do to concur perhaps with staff's recommendations and maybe do some research on some of the other properties in the area uh, that may have some of the same use that we're asking for. But, I mean, if I understand, you're asking for some time on those items potentially? I'd like uh, to hear what you say. Okay, I mean, <laughs> and if you can, that's I mean, fine. Let's, let's try it this way. I, I understand where you're at. Let, this is advertised a public hearing. Uh, anybody here wish to speak on this item, please come forward and give us your name. Uh, tell us your concerns. We'll give uh, the applicant time to respond and uh, answer any questions uh, following the public hearing. Steve Troop, is it on? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm at 3264 North Gerheim. Property south of this on Gerheim and Cheyenne has been rezoned uh, professional commercial, not uh, limited or de uh, commercial. And at the time of that rezoning, I went back to the county commissioners and they changed it because they said most of Cheyenne should become professional commercial. The gas station on the corner was snuck through years before there were many homes out there. So that's the only reason it's there. But that's no reason we should change now for something else. The county recommended professional commercial on Cheyenne to butt up against the homes there. The piece of property that butts up to mine is professional commercial. Okay. And also on the rest of it there, two-story homes looking into the backyards of uh, Ranch Estates homes. I don't think you would want it on yours. The two homes to the south of, or to the east of this property are owned by their brother or brother-in-law, and if this goes through, odds are he will try to convert his residence to the same thing, making it a larger complex. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Hey, uh, anybody else? Thank you. Todd Parlow, 240 North 19th Street. Are these patients, are they going to be ambulatory? I have a real problem with, with people that are like dead ridden in that, and they're in a two-story facility. How do they get them out in case of an emergency? Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to speak? Seeing no one, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, commissioners? I have some questions. Commissioner. Well, Mr. Chairman? Oh, go ahead. Uh, about six months ago, I think it was, maybe five, you were here before us before trying to get a special use permit for a, uh, a group residential care facility with where you were going to have 10 senior citizens, and we approved it. And we also put on there a condition that you were to come back a year later, and we were going to check out and see how this went. And a few of the commissioners, I think, were somewhat reluctant 
to vote for that, but we did vote for it and approve it. But here you are five or six months later trying to expand what you're doing there. Uh, and it's almost like we're having our tail cut off a little bit at a time. But what's really bo bothersome to me is the amount of the project that you're trying to put on a what's roughly less than an acre. Uh, you're trying to put on about 13,000 square feet, a couple of two-story buildings. That area has mostly been residential, and I don't think this is an appropriate buffer between that residential area and Cheyenne uh, Street or Cheyenne Avenue. Uh, I think you've got too much on this property. I think if this is what you want to do, you need to find a piece of property in an area that's more conducive to what you're trying to do. I can, I can sympathize with the neighbors around you. Uh, your second stories, because uh, you're asking for these buffers to be, uh, you want waivers on the on the uh, setbacks and everything, the second story is going to be able to see right in their backyard. There's going to be absolutely no privacy for those neighbors, and I don't think that's what they signed on for. So I have to be completely upfront with you. I don't support this project, and I'm going to be recommending that it be disapproved. Okay, Commissioner uh, Ellsworth. I was looking at the back of documents, and, and, and uh, uh, Commissioner Flink has just mentioned something about that. Is the size really what I'm seeing? I mean, that thing's huge. We're seeing uh, multiple two-story buildings all in the one lot. Is, is that right? Am I reading that correctly? On the east side of the lot, there's a two-story. We want to do a two-story there uh, on that property line there. And then on the, on the west side, on that back property line, there's an existing uh, building there that we want. It, there's, I believe it's 16 or 12-foot walls now, and we wanted to Add a, two, uh, add a second floor to that for caregivers. And it basically, it's so tall now that we wouldn't go on top of the 12 feet. We would come down to where it would have eight foot walls, and then we would extend from that to the second story. And it wouldn't be that tall. But that's, that's the only two story that would be on the west side, would be that existing shop there, and then an additional I believe it's 15 feet or so for an addition for a second story for that to be expanded. But then it drops down to a one story that extends to the back of the property on that west side building. Then on the east side where it butts up against my brother and sister-in-law's property, which they're not opposing, that is two story. And I and I'm planting a lot of large trees and um, some large bamboo and some baker pears and just to enhance the property and to and also what I want to do is the top floor there are windows we would uh, put some blinds there on the outside so that they wouldn't be looking in people's backyards but would be looking down to the outside there and then the zero lot that we're asking for is just where the driveway and the existing building are uh, instead of they're saying eight foot then you have to put some trees there we're actually asking for a, a zero clearance because the driveway has to extend from the existing house over to the block wall so that there's enough access there for uh, a fire truck to get in and around the building and, and then that's the struggle I have with these redevelopments. We take these lots that are smaller because they were residential, and then we try to uh, convert them to some kind of commercial use. But, but I've said this before, it's like trying to fit the, the square peg into the round hole. And sometimes it just doesn't work, and, and that I'm concerned about it. I see the same uh, concern that's been raised. Now, one last question I have for you, and that is, why did it change from 10 beds to now, what is it, 75? Is that no. what I no, what? we're asking for 47. 47. Why did it go from 10 to 47? What, what, what happened there? What well, was the change? I wanted, I wanted to maximize what I could do on the property so it would be financially, you know, feasible to do. And uh, I'm happy with the 10 bed right now. And I'm, I'm really, I'm, I should ask you to obey 18, 19, and 20 so that we can go back to the drawing board and see what, we can do to maybe satisfy some of these people and I'm, their I'm pretty sure audience. that with the GPA 
we're going to keep these all tied together is it because um, the only reason to consider the GPA is if there's some other compelling reason in my mind. So um, if you've got any arguments back there, or you, you've got some ideas that you think are going to uh, help us out here, I'd, I'd, I'd share everything with us right now. Cause, um, <laughs> or, or withdraw the entire thing, go back to the drawing board and see if you can come up with something, but I'm not sure that it would help. It's, it's a large enough project. I, I have my concerns about it, but... This is one of my representatives. I'm just here as a kind of technical support. Please I'm give us your name for the record. Peter Belova, Lea Engineering, uh, 823 Las Vegas Boulevard, Suite 500. Um, I would like to have a little bit more time to change the design of, uh, and maybe uh, move the buildings a little bit closer to the middle of the property and um, reconsider some of the, um, the items uh, we heard from staff. Well, I mean, so if, I would like to hold it in yeah. advance. But in this area, I'm, I'm, let me give you some history on this area, this, this block where you are, is probably the, the all-time great uh, zoning by a thousand cuts. Every, you know, from a, a fine family that, uh, uh, Several of the commissioners know that built a lot of retail out there. We'd have meetings on the agenda. We'd hold them. We'd, there'd be another meeting on the agenda. And this is 15, 20 years ago. And uh, the neighbors out here, the horse uh, properties and the, the ranch estate neighbors, would be hauled down here. You, you were be, this applicant was before us just a few months ago with, with an application. And uh, I just I think we're going down the road. Well. Let's keep throwing something up here, and maybe it'll slide through. Maybe we'll get something on. I think if if you want to develop the property, you need to think your application through, and make a pro make the total application. Ha hold the public meetings with the neighbors and bring it forward, because I, I don't see approving this in bits and pieces. Um, I personally, I think this is a very uh, large, uh, overbuilt situation when you look at RE estates adjacent to it and uh, you know even the, the the gas station that's out there um, put in a huge uh, landscape buffer around there years ago being sensitive to what the uh, half acre and acre neighbors um, wanted so I'm not going to support this but I, but I also don't believe that we're going to, you know, unless, unless there's some compelling reason that the commission finds to, to approve this in bits and pieces, because I, I think the neighbors deserve to know what's going to impact their neighborhood. I mean, there's that area north of Cheyenne that is really ranch estate. We've had a lot of different applications come through here. There's parts of commercial to the west. There's commercial. But that segment right there north is, and for what I was submitted, a two-story building on that north property line, or, or so close to the property lines, I think isn't considered what the neighbors uh, should be, and, and way beyond what we should approve, in my opinion. So if, if you'd like to request this to be tabled or withdrawn without prejudice, uh, I think... I'd like to do that. I'd like to go hold. back and hold it. Um, well, hold it. We would we would want it to be uh, tabled so that way it goes through a new uh, notice and meeting process, right, um, director? Yes. Okay. So if if you like that, we'll consider. It. If somebody'd like to make a motion to table this item, so moved. If there are no other comments. Please cast your vote. And that is approved the table, and uh, please contact staff whenever you're ready to bring that item back before. Okay. And uh, just for the neighbors, we, we have heard your comments, and we will continue to hear your comments on this, this area. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> item 21, SUP 38607, applicant Shabbat of Southern Nevada, owner Shabbat, California, 
for a thrift store nonprofit at 6029 Charleston Boulevard. Mr. Chairman, uh, this is a request for a special use permit uh, for a nonprofit thrift store, thrift store in a portion of a vacant two story office building. The owner has indicated that the remaining area of the building would remain vacant at this time. A thrift shop is permitted in the C1 zoning district with the approval of a special use permit. Staff recommends approval with conditions as the proposed thrift shop nonprofit use meets all conditions of Title 19.04 and will have no, in, no adverse impact on the surrounding community. Please note that one letter of support was received for this item since publication. Okay, good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Michelle Morgan DeVore on behalf of Shabbat. Uh, we would like to open up a thrift store there. Um, I did read the conditions, and one of them was to have the landscaping cleaned up. I did bring before and after pictures. That has already been done, if anyone has driven by. Um, and so I would appreciate the approval. Okay, this was advertised as a public hearing. Anybody here which speaks on it, please come forward. Thank you. 240 North 19th Street. Is this the old motorcycle place? No, it is an old copier building. A, a copier building? Well, before the copier is the motorcycle. Um, anybody else wish to speak on this item? Seeing no one, go ahead and close the public hearing. <laughs> and I blinked. It's okay. <laughs> There's yeah. no discussion. I'm ready to make a motion. Okay. In regards to item number 21, uh, special use permit 38607, make a recommendation for approval, so we tall staff conditions. And that uh, 100 years ago was a motorcycle shop. <laughs> so he wins. <laughs> you win. There is a motion for approval of subject all conditions. Please uh, cast your vote. And that is approved, and that will go on to City Council on October 6th. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Already. Now we go to item uh, 23, VAR 38827, applicant Sophie's Pizza owner Jenny Hayuni to allow a 74-foot parking space where 91 is requ are required for an existing restaurant at 821 North Lamb Boulevard. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is proposing to expand the existing restaurant by 1,951 square feet, uh, uh, 1,000 square feet of uh, front of house and 951 square feet of back of house into the former laundry self-service uh, site. The proposed restaurant expansion in, into this suite will result in an increase in the number of required parking spaces by 17, uh, resulting in the need for the variance. Staff is recommending denial for the red variance as the subject site cannot accommodate the additional parking required by the more intense restaurant use. If the application is denied, the, denied the application of uh, the expansion of the restaurant will not be allowed. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Tom Galena, 6459 Red Garnett Court, representing the order for Sophia's. Um, Today I'm here to talk on behalf of the Sophia's restaurant. Um, we've been in the shopping center for, it's been an existing pizza restaurant for 20 years. And later, uh, Dottie's uh, became one of the occupants. And also later they had an addition to the construction there, they added an extra building for the fish restaurant. Now if we look at all the parking that you're looking at, um, I've been a member, uh, the manager there for the last uh, 11 months. And the time that I've been there, I've never seen this uh, parking lot, maybe a third full. It's an area where Dottie's gets uh, mostly walk, walking traffic and mostly there's four businesses in this, uh, our complex that is our shutdown. When I was asked to do the parking analysis, the parking analysis was done for the empty spaces uh, and considered as a retail area, which would make it more spots and show it to be more spots. If you go into the fish restaurant and you look at their actual area of dining, and I've measured everything myself, I took some time to do that, uh, and the substantial uh, space in there maybe gets a, a third full. And 
I calculated the spaces, and when I first came out with um, the total space needed for the seating in there, um, I felt that there was substantial parking. Uh, also, I moved on to each unit one at a time and checked out their hours of operation. Uh, we have the barbershop that's a, the new addition that came in just recently, a couple months. Uh, they closed down at like 5 p.m., which is the dinner time where we'll be having some traffic. And as far as the other businesses, uh, they're shut down. There's one more tax uh, place inside. Uh, sometimes they still open until like 8 o'clock, but they, they use minimum spaces. Now, I mean, if you go back to the old codes that we're going by and calculating these spaces, I see a problem. A little history on me. I uh, retired in the labor union and the operators engineers. I had my own uh, company six years. I was a contractor here. I'm born and raised in Las Vegas. Eleven months ago, I got laid off because of the economy. And I have uh, now became the manager here where it, this, to me, is a ridiculous situation. Uh, there's plenty of parking. We've been there first. We've been there the longest. All we did is uh, rent two spaces to put some tables and chairs in there so we can provide some places for people seating. It's not a very elegant area. I live on the west end of town. On this east side of town, there's a lot of uh, run-down areas. And let, me, let me ask you this, sir. Yes, sir. There are some conditions on here, and I, from what I'm hearing you say, you don't believe it's uh, parking is an issue. Is that no, pretty sir. much the bottom line? Uh, we don't, I don't believe parking is an issue. Uh, I've calculated everything. And there was an existing building uh, business there before. And after taking photos and watching this um, and going through this, I've monitored everything. I see substantial parking. And I also see that most of the people are foot traffic. They come from the trailers right. and the area around, uh, surrounding areas. But like, like saying, the most important area uh, for the evening is when the, the restaurant will be open. The other businesses uh, are not open and that provides even more spaces. Um, and, you know, what's important to me is that uh, I can open up this addition that provides some more uh, jobs for other people and bring in some more uh, customers to this area, uh, hopefully to better the businesses in the shopping center. Maybe we can get some more uh, people opening these other businesses in there. Okay. Um, I have letters from the uh, existing tenants in there. I'm sure you've uh, read over them. And they feel very strongly to recommend that we uh, be able to expand to just a dining room area there. Uh, for one, it would, uh, like I explained to you, it, uh, they feel, the barbershop, that it would bring more customers for them. And one, that was one of the reasons uh, they had stated to me that they moved in there. They seen that that was uh, in the works of being opened. And about four months ago, I went down to the city and I was told that I had substantial parking. When I moved forward through the process and the tenant improvement program, uh, the tenant improvement uh, application, and I did everything that I was told to do. And we did some work in there. We hired a contractor. We got all the drawings prepared. And we're into this project over $25,000. And let me, let me yes. ask you this. There, there are conditions for approval. Uh, yes, sir. I, my, my colleague here says there are five conditions. Okay. Have you read over those conditions? I haven't received any of that. I was trying to find out where I would receive that from. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you, you but my suggestion is uh, why don't you allow our staff to have you review those and then in the meantime maybe we can hear from the public if there's anyone here to speak. Okay. Thank you. This was advertised at public hearing. Anybody here wish to speak on site, please come forward. Seeing no one will close the public hearing. Uh, question, real quick. Yes, uh, so segment of your business takeout? Uh, right now is 75% uh, is delivery. Okay, so. Yeah. And, uh, we, and we, you know, we have some pickup. Uh, we have a pickup okay. special dinner 20 years, so we do have a uh, little bit of traffic for that. Uh, if you want to take like a second, hour only, yeah, go take a second, read, glance at those conditions, yeah. and um, if Mr. Evans wants to make a motion in the meantime. Yeah, um, just I, I hear what you're saying, sir, and um, I would agree with you. Uh, the, the code requires 91 where 74 are required. Yes, sir. I think uh, 
pizza type delivery, there's a fast turnaround, and you make a very interesting and compelling argument in that many of the businesses that are in that center operate at peak hours at a very different time than your peak hours. Yes, sir. And my hope is that uh, that you do have a parking problem at some point. That says that you're fully, um, yeah, you know, some fully customers. staffed and yeah. fully uh, lots so of customers too, and cha-ching, cha-ching. So yes, uh, my thought is look over the, mm -hmm. uh, the conditions and I would be more than pleased to make a, a, a motion for approval of, of the variance. So subject subject to the five conditions. Yeah, there's a motion on the floor while he's reading those. If, are there any other comments? Or I just wanted to ask you about your handicap parking, sir, and your uh, handicap um, high, and your uh, the ability for the disabled to get in and out of your yes. bathrooms, as well as comfortable yes. eating and then to leave in their cars. Are yes, you sir. all up to date if on you, that? If you can see on the picture, uh, I did the best I could on that. I hope I didn't get on that. But if you can see where the proposed addition is there, there's the two handicapped uh, spots right in front of us. Okay. And there's a ramp that leads right into the front door. And we have two doors in the front and two fire doors in the back for exits. And it, 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 it exceeds the, the 32 inches or the yes, 32 inches at yes. least. Okay, thank yes, you. You're welcome, ma'am. Um, yeah, we would, uh, we would agree to the conditions. Oh, very good. Yes, sir. Then, Mr. Chair, if there's no further discussion, my motion would be for approval. I think you make a good argument. The peak hours are very different. Pizza is a fast turnaround time. You have a substantial amount of delivery and takeout. And uh, I, I think you've met your burden. And my motion would be uh, to approve this and to allow the variance uh, VAR 38827 with the five conditions as listed and the applicant has agreed to. Yes, sir. There is a motion for approval. Please catch it. And that is approved, and that's final action in the absence of an appeal. Yes, Good sir. luck, and I hope everybody uh, enjoys your restaurant and comes yes, down there often. Okay. Yes, sir. I hope to see you all there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is that an invitation? Now we're going to item 24, VAR 38840, applicant owner Ronald and Kimberly Marks, to allow a proposed 1,500 square foot, 14 foot tall metal accessory structure, class two, where a 497 square foot, 10 foot tall wood stucco accessory structure class two is allowed at 1301 North Gateway Road. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the subject site currently consists of a vacant 2,034 uh, square foot single family residence with an existing 520 square foot class one accessory structure, a casita. Uh, the applicant is proposing an addition of 1,500 foot garage. The proposed garage will require a variance for uh, the requirements for the building area uh, as it is 1,003 square feet larger than permitted. The material to be used is metal as opposed to a compatible material with the main dwelling unit and the proposed height is far, four feet higher than the primary structure, uh, primary structure. The applicant has provided no evidence of a unique or extraordinary circumstance and the structure could be designed to meet the requirements of Title 19. Staff is recommending denial. Please note we received two additional letters of support after publication. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I might. Oh, yes. Uh, I need to abstain from this matter. Uh, I, their, their daughter works for me, and therefore, on the advice of counsel, I need to abstain from the matter. Thank you. Okay. Again, I'm good Kimberly evening. Marks, 1301 North Gateway. And um, uh, we agree with the conditions that were set forth if it was approved. And um, I'm not sure if you have any questions for me, but... The structure is to allow us to park our vehicles and um, begin some renovations on the property so that we can improve it and make it uh, a pleasant pro property in the neighborhood. It has been vacant. It was vacant for um, over six months, probably nine months before we bought it. There's been a lot of graffiti. It's been broken into. We have gone by every weekend and painted and covered up the, week the graffiti and we're ready to move on to the, the project site and inhabit the home and, and casita and improve it and make it a beautiful home. 
Okay. This was advertised a public hearing. Anybody here wish to speak on this item? Please come forward. Thank you, Todd Farley, 240 North 19th Street. Do we know what this will look like from the street? Will you be able to see the, the increased elevation? From which street? Um, uh, the gateway is a private road. We are on a private road. It's not public access driving by, and we are at the south end of the project where um, we would be the only ones driving down to our home at the end of this road. It, from the um, front of the home, when you look, it will stand higher than the casita at this point. But the, the homes to the west of us are two-story and uh, about three or four feet higher in elevation than our lot. And so it will not stand higher than the homes behind us. And uh, our future plans, we are in the middle of getting uh, remodeling plans for the home drawn up. And once we complete the remodeling of the home, it will be compatible with the height of the home. Okay. Do you, I mean, I'm trying to look at this um, plan here, but there is a, a, a parcel land just south of you? Yes. That's proposed. How will this building orient to that parcel? It is at the, our building will be at the north end of our parcel. And then at the south end of the parcel is a is a, pro, a park that is a being built by park, the city. Right. Uh, do you have an elevation of this metal building uh, that you can? Yes, I believe it was included in the materials. Yes, it is a professional uh, metal garage building. Same pitch roof as the the home. Yes. It has to be this tall. It can be just the little. We wanted it large enough for um, a recreational vehicle to be parked inside, and a boat to be bar parked inside. We would not. We prefer not to park them on the outside, in at the home. We would like them to be under cover and um, so they aren't vandalized with. So it was to allow a, re a recreational vehicle to be parked inside. Would you be willing to? clad the building to pick up the stucco finishes of your house? Um, um, it would be to a great ex, um, expense to do that, and I don't know that it's in keeping with the other properties that are in the neighborhood as well. I think what we've proposed is in keeping the land to the very north of us. The owner signed our letter agreeing with it. The houses to the north of us, the, the people living in the homes on our Private Street have all agreed with us that this would be okay. And you have a copy of that of any thing of these? Yes. Um, yes. Here we have um, Geraldine Webb at 1427. And then on this, Juan Diaz, the next door neighbor, and Art Lanier, also on Gateway signed. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, Commissioner, Secretary uh, Evans? Yeah, I just, uh, a couple of quick questions. There is one uh, letter of opposition. Yes. Is that a, a neighbor immediate? Uh, no, I looked, and that is a, a company. It's an LLC company, um, and they own the street to the west of us. is called Henry. They own two of the... I believe they're either duplexes or four, fourplex rental units, and they are at closer up to Lamb. So they're about a half mile, or oh, Owens. Owens. They're yeah. about a half mile north of us. They won't even be able to see our property from where they're Okay, they're and, that's, and that's my issue. That, that's my question. Um, the people who are most affected by this, I would think, would be the people that have the, the biggest voice. And it sounds as if uh, your neighbors are all supportive of this. Um, I would agree with uh, Chairman Truesdell, though. Um, a lot of these buildings, they're prefab metal, industrial-looking buildings. And if they look into other people's yards or if they're visible from the street or public right-of-ways, they look like warehouses in what's supposed to be a residential area. Um, generally speaking, I'm not real fond of these. Mm -hmm. But if it's hidden in your own property, 
and the people who have to look at it uh, are okay with it, then I'm okay with it. But I would suggest, um, I, I've been thinking about ways, you mentioned you know, to, to cover this in stucco or something that the cost would be prohibitive. Um, and I note that this was a foreclosure or uh, a, a vacant building that you've taken over and, and obviously put some time and care into fixing up and I appreciate that. I think the neighborhood probably appreciates it. But I sometimes wonder if you could take a building like this um, and plant some sort of trailing vines or canonical trees, you know, uh, uh, Italian cypress. The cat's claw is relatively inexpensive and it grows in the heat. It takes full sun and in no time at all, if you, if you irrigate it, it's drought tolerant, but it can cover much of the whole building. And it, unlike some of the other ivy type, it doesn't attract the rodents and the bugs. And it can be very pretty. So it's, is that something that you would, I wouldn't make it a condition, but it's something I would recommend that you Of course, that we have no consider. problem at all with landscaping it. Okay. Well, uh, if there's no further discussion, uh, I would like to, to make a motion for approval, um, but I, I strongly urge you to try to do Understood. something that keeps it from, if, if, there's, if it's visible from anywhere where the public would see, to keep it looking uh, something other than a, than a warehouse. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah, the, the, I'm going to support your application because I think you're, you're, you're making an effort to improve this lot and, and obviously uh, make some improvements to the neighborhood down there. But too often these metal buildings get built and down the road somebody looks at it and they go, oh, that's great, they'll buy the house. And they think they can run a business out of it and suddenly we wind up with something less attractive in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That's why I was I concerned about how you look at it. Um, I know it's, it, it, we're, not, we're not here to re redesign this tonight, but you've got a, a couple bands of rock on the front of that house that are pretty attractive. They're landscape rocks for us to use yeah. in the front yard. But uh, you could incorporate those and, and try to tie some of that to the to this building and make it make it more appealing for everyone. But right. um, just, just one quick question. Is this going to be a permanent building? Because uh, the way I read your application, it always it, it seems like it's just temporary and so you can store stuff until you're building. Is it going to stay after everything's done? No, the purpose of it, the, the, the site right now has zero garage in it. There's just a home and a casita, and there is no garage. It's, it's for us to park our vehicles, and it's to stay permanent. It's a permanently cement foundation building. Okay, thank you. Um, I think, um, I don't know whether I made the motion or not, but my motion would be for approval of agenda item number 24, VAR 388. 40 subject to the conditions as listed in the staff report. And you indicated earlier that you agreed with those. Yes. Thank you. There is a motion for approval. Please cast your vote. And that is approved with uh, Commissioner Ellsworth abstaining. This item is final action in the absence of any appeal. Good luck. Thank you. Now we go to items 25, 26, 27. These are related items. VAR 38857, VAR 38858, and SDR 38856. I'm going to abstain on these items as much as I still have some business dealings with McDonald's Corporation. So I turn this over to Vice Chairman. Staff. Go ahead. Yes, I said staff, but maybe you didn't hear. I was waiting for the items to be read into the record. Mm, I thought they were just read. He didn't read them in. Then I will read them in. VR 38857, applicant owner, McDonald's Corporation, to allow 37 parking spaces where 40 spaces are required at 7662 Westlake Mead Boulevard. Uh, companion item number 26, VAR 38858, to allow an 8-foot tall menu board where 7 feet is the maximum height allowed. Two 12-foot tall incidental signs, clearance arms, where 7 feet is the maximum height allowed. An external illumination of one of the incidental signs, uh, the clearance arms, where internal illumination only is allowed. 
And then item number 27, SDR 38856, to modify drive-through lanes and reduce landscaping to an existing 3,734 square foot restaurant with drive-through. Uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, this is a request to renovate the existing uh, uh, restaurant with drive-through. Staff is recommending approval of the site plan and parking variance as it conforms to the original approvals uh, for parking uh, and landscaping. Uh, staff is, however, recommending denial of the sign variance as no evidence of an, a unique or extraordinary circumstances has been represented. And the applicant has created a self-imposed hardship but is by designing a menu board and incidental signs that do not meet the height standards of Title 19.14. Removal of the incidental signs and the menu board would allow conformance to Title 19. If the applications are denied, the existing square foot or the existing uh, restaurant with drive through would remain. If only the sign variance is denied, then the existing signage would remain or the applicant could redesign the signage to conform to Title 19, 14. Uh, please note we have received additional letters of support and protest after publication. Thank you. This has been advertised as a public hearing. Uh, first we hear from the applicant. Uh, it's Kerry Shahan, 8905 West Post Road, representing the applicant McDonald's. Um, well, I, I just want to... Um, to basically, well, basically, I concur with the staff on on items 25 and 27 in approval with this project. I do have um, some photos uh, of the existing conditions for the signage, um, of the existing signage versus what the new signage is that we're proposing. And I also want to point out in item number 25 that um, where our site plan shows 35, where 35 parking spaces required, where we believe 38 are required, so I want to bring that to staff's attention. On which item? On 25. We will check that out. Okay, can we proceed while you're checking that out? Yeah, All right, this was advertised in public hearing. All this would like to speak on the matter. Please come forward at this time. Thank you. Todd Farlow, 240 North 19th Street. A couple of weeks ago, we heard a uh, 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 another McDonald's by Eastern, and I think it was Owens down there. Is this the same type of sign issue that that uh, that is pre that was presented then? Are they is McDonald's Corporation going to a different standard sign? I guess that was my question. If I made that, Chairman, that was a different company, but there are changes in fast food signage that we are tracking. Thank you. Can I, I can find that out. Uh, hold on just one minute. Oh, Anybody else like to speak on the matter? If not, we'll close the public hearing. Okay, go ahead, please. No, I just want to clarify. This is the same signage that was presented at the last meeting that we're proposing today. Nothing's changed. And, and you mentioned that 27 was a approval. My notes here show 27 as being a denial. Um, that's on the agenda, and that's incorrect. It's uh, approval um, on the first variance, a denial on the second and approval on the SDR. The okay. SDR staff uh, report is correct. There's just an error in the cover sheet. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Chairman, yes, this uh, sign package that you're putting forward, it's the same sign package you have with most of your McDonald's stores now going up in town? Yeah, the, the signs are, are consistent with national standards of what is put into new restaurants. And just one really dumb question. I, I noticed that uh, the agenda is saying it's 12 foot of a sign, but I've been looking at your elevations and your plans, it seems like that sign's only 11 feet. Is that correct? Or? Um, yeah, the pictures I'm seeing here are the correct cut sheets for the signs going at this location. There's no further comment. I would move I, for... Oh, hold on just a minute. Uh, uh, of course, points. sir. Director Wheeler, if maybe you can help me with this. So you say nationally McDonald's has decided to go with a different height than a sign? Is that, is that what uh, I'm hearing? No, I'm just implying that these are signs that they're using in their new stores. If so let me ask Director Wheeler then, how, how can the corporation, I mean, if we've got a, a variance or we've got a, a certain height that will allow these signs and then a corporation says, um, we've now decided that we're going to go to a different sign for all of our stores, how do they, in a sense, seem to be dictating to the city what height that we should allow them to have their signs. Well, that's, Chairman, and that's why a variance is required. Right. Um, they've come up, um, and again, this is the second one that you've seen and that we've seen, 
And so they're coming forward with a much larger signage. Um, we will take a look, but at this point in time, these signs exceed the standards of the code, and that's why a variance would need to be given, and in this case, the staff has recommended denial. Yeah. I'm kind of of the belief of one of the folks that uh, oppose this. You know, everybody knows where McDonald's is. I, I even know where McDonald's is. You can see the sign. It's a unique brand. Um, the, go the arches have been around uh, with 120 billion served on them for years. Um, and so, you know, I don't think bigger is always better in this case. And um, I, I don't know if there is a need for your sign to be bigger. Would it be okay for me to respond to that? Sh sure. Um, I would like to present what's there today and then what we're, at, we're adding. This is a photo of, an, of a double drive through there. Is there presently? And um, I have examples of a typical signage that is very similar in nature to the heights. On the menu board itself, we're asking for um, go from a seven foot standard to an eight foot sign for better visibility. I don't think that personally the sign is excessive. So what we're looking at there is what's there today? Correct. And, and, that, and what that is it you're going to change it to? Excuse me? You're going to change it to what? Um, This is a new installation here in Las Vegas um, to show you examples of the, sign, the signage, the menu board. And the other, the, the guard at the, at the entry when you come into the drive-thru is specifically to guard against um, vehicles, you know, being too tall and colliding with the building. But, but, I mean, my comment, I, this, this site is actually right down the street from my office, so I actually visit the, the Chevron station there uh, just about every other day. But that, that is a tight site, and now you're going to go with a double, you want a double lane? Uh, no, I'm sorry to interrupt. We're actually, it's an existing double lane, and our efforts here are to go to a single lane in order to improve the traffic. Circulation? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. But in terms of needing more visibility, how long has this McDonald's been at that location? Um, it's been there a while. I'd say 20 yeah, years plus. Exactly. It's, it's, and so it's been there it, 20 years. Exactly. That's and so neighbor. everybody yeah. knows it's there. Uh, you're in a mature neighborhood. Um, you're surrounded by residential as well as a lot of commercial. Um, I understand that corridor uh, between um, Tanea all the way up to, to Buffalo and even on up a little further is almost a, a food court in itself. Um, and, and I just think that, that people know you're there. And, and for a bigger sign, because you want to increase visibility, I mean, I, don't, I just think you're putting a big sign there, and, it, and it's just a waste of, of space there. I, it, people know it's there. It's been a McDonald's. It's been there for, for a number of years. Um, I, I, just, I just don't, I don't think that the um, drive through signs really you know, oh. it's, it's a McDonald's. Here's, Everybody knows me, the drive-thru um, there. Let me, this is um, Kevin. Uh, Kevin McCauley, uh, 3205 Townsend Hall Court, the construction manager for McDonald's. Uh, as you can see in this picture here, the, the size of it is to provide protection while our customers are ordering from the weather and the rain. So it's not just a sign. It serves as a double purpose as protection. So this isn't a sign out on the road that's big, flashy, and McDonald's is here. This is just a, right next to the drive through And in this particular site, it's in the back of the building, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It, it would be, it would be, yeah. this would be gone. It would be in the place of this, right where the order point is. The order point is in this, where your menu, your order comes up, tells you what's, what you ordered. It is yeah. in that piece of that sign. All right, so this isn't a, okay. I think Commissioner Goyne's concern, and, and but correct me if I'm wrong. I think your concern is we don't want another big sign out on the roadway that's that's flashing telling us it's McDonald's. No, this is something in the back of the building. Yeah, is this that, is, is this is concern? strictly a drive-through component. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I understand that, and, and again, my contention is McDonald's a mainstay. Uh, everybody knows when you go in, you're either going to go in or you're going to go through the drive-through, and, and I don't think people have problems finding it. Let me ask a question, if I may. Can you address the issue in the staff report that says that you're reducing landscaping 
Is that because you're modifying the drive-through or because you're adding signage? It's more of modifying the drive-through and adding a loading pad because there's, currently there's not one there. So we're trying to conform with the code. You can't find another way to provide some kind of landscaping we're, we're in actually, there? We're adding, um, we have four trees that we are adding to the property. And um, I didn't realize the landscaping was that big of a concern because we are, we are revitalizing the landscaping and adding additional trees. Because uh, personally, I, I thought we were, if you look at the existing here, by closing off that first lane, that's all going to be landscaping. So we really are adding landscape, and I don't know where the reduction in landscaping came from. I'm just going by what the staff report and how it's titled. It says you need a variance to reduce the landscaping at the existing uh, facility. Can yeah, staff the, the provide any? Uh, if I may, yes. that's not a variance. It's, that was on the site plan and it's part of the modification to the site plan. The variances are the signage and the parking only. Right, but I guess my question is, it's still all one package. Are, I wanna ensure that you're not taking out a bunch of landscaping, pouring concrete, and putting in signage. It doesn't sound that way. No. But I need you to convince me. We're even <laughs> reducing the signage by taking away that big gateway that's there existing, the big monstrous red thing. That's ugly and trying to add a new element. Commissioner Trowbridge. Well, <clears throat> I'll, I hope my wife's not listening, but I'll admit that I've been in that place probably more times than the average employee that works there. <laughs> and, I, and I drive through it quite frequently also. And so the 95% of the traffic that goes into that particular McDonald's comes in off of Lake Mead. Uh, the remaining percentage would be people that are sneaking in the back, the back area there. And I think the signage that you're trying to modify is going to do nothing to attract or distract people driving up and down Lake Mead. What I see it being is a convenience for the people who have already made the commitment to utilize the drive-through. Uh, my concerns with the project only stem for any action that you may be taking that might restrict the drive-through. It sounds like you're going from the current two lanes that are very narrow and difficult for me to get through in my big truck uh, <laughs> to two to a single lane, which might make it a little easier. And uh, so I, I don't see this as being a, a detriment whatsoever. You know, it's uh, the, the larger sign for the menu might give you a greater opportunity to make the size of the print a little larger, which I would appreciate. And uh, some of the other people who live in the neighborhood might appreciate it also. That's my observation about the proposal, and I'll, I'll probably be supporting it. Thank you. Commissioner Flingas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to approve item 25, uh, VAR 38857, and follow staff's recommendation to approve. And yeah, you do accept all the conditions, correct? Yeah. I just, just the one concern over the parking, because we do show 35. Did we get that resolved yet? Uh, could you clarify? You're showing that you only have 35 spaces on site? We're providing 35, yes, and with 38 required. As opposed to versus 40. 40 is required based upon the previous approval on this site, correct? Th that is correct, yes. Uh, previously, the site had 40 spaces. Uh, it was not constructed. It had 40 spaces to begin with at some point. There was a relocation of a trash enclosure, which then took up a, some additional spaces that were removed uh, when that trash enclosure was relocated uh, a long time ago. And uh, the resulting factor is, is as presented. I, I think the, the calculations came out based upon the, the non-conforming of that, but uh, I need to take a quick look at your plan to confirm how many spaces you're showing on your plan, but I believe you're showing 37 on your plan. Okay, if we are, then that's great. But I, I guess my, excuse me, Chairman, Go ahead. I thought you just mentioned 35, and I'm okay with whatever, but I'm concerned that if we're noticing for 37, where 40 is required, and now you're telling us 35, where 40 is required, I think that's problematic. Well, I think according to our calculations, 38 is required, or we're providing 35, we're still deficient three. And to right. add to it. Right, but it was noticed to the public at 37, right. not 35. Okay. So you got to get the right number, I think. Can we get 
So where are you? Are you going to provide 35 well, or yeah. 37? I'm 35 in the plan. Let's, can I see what staff has as a site plan? Okay, did you hear that? We're going to go ahead and trail these, the, all these uh, items, all three of them, and test it. All right, well, we'll, we'll trail that and we'll bring it back after we do the next item. Okay, thank you. Yes, we'll trail the motion, please, and then we'll uh, come back to that. Now we go to item 28, SUP 38817, applicant. Statewide uh, bail bonds owner 616 South 3rd Street for a bail bond service at 616 South 3rd Street. Good evening, Mark Kula on behalf of the applicant, uh, Linda Reach, who is the owner of Statewide, her husband, Stephen Reach. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman? The Bail bond service is permitted in the C2 zoning district with the approval of a special use permit. Uh, the proposed use is located in proximity to courthouses and the detention center, complies with all Title 19.04 requirements, and can be conducted in a compatible manner with the surrounding development and land uses. Uh, therefore, staff recommends approval with conditions. Please note that additional protests and letters of support were received for this item since publication. Thank you. Your Honor, we'd ask that you follow the recommendations of staff. Okay. This was advertised public hearing. You're going to be here. Wish to speak on this item. Please come forward. Seeing no one close public hearing. You're in agreement with all staff's conditions, right? Yes, we are. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members. if there's no discussion, I'm prepared to make a motion to follow our staff's recommendation for approval for agenda item number 28, SUP 38817, uh, with all uh, other conditions. It's an SUP. There's a motion for approval. Please cast your vote. Thank you. Thank you. And that is approved, and that's final action in the absence of appeal. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to go to item uh, 29, SUP uh, 38866, applicant Leslie Wilburn, owner Luke Lobato, LLC, for a 775-square-foot massage establishment with waivers of the distance separation requirements to allow 100 feet from a school where 400 feet is required, zero feet from a residential use where 400 feet is required, and 230 feet from another massage establishment where 1,000 feet is required at 9061 West Sahara Avenue. Mr. Chairman, uh, a massage establishment is permitted in the C1 zoning district with the approval of a special use permit. Uh, the proposed location is within a shopping center, but waivers are required due to the proximity of the site to a school, residential use, and another massage establishment. Therefore, staff is recommending denial of the request. Please note that additional protests and letters of support were received for this item since publication. Good evening. Hi, how are you? Leslie Wilburn, 8455 West Sahara Avenue, number 233. Tell us what you want to do. Oh, I um, actually wrote down some stuff just so I didn't forget anything. Um, like I said, my name is Leslie Wilburn. I'm a licensed massage therapist and nationally certified massage therapist. I was a labor and delivery nurse and family practice nurse in the U.S. Navy for eight years. When my established enlistment was over, I started a career in massage therapy, and I've worked in high-end spas here in Vegas. I have a passion for patient care and body work, but unfortunately the importance of infant and children massage has been greatly overlooked. In my years of nursing, I've seen many infants and children benefit from massage therapy from birth defects to chronic illnesses and injuries. They have now a greater chance of normal adulthood and the illnesses in the elderly. This is why I have extended my regular in-home practice to a family practice. I'm a mother of an 11-year-old and a 1-year-old, and they have greatly benefited from massages over some time. Their immune systems are improved, and my daughter, from being an athlete, remains free of muscle tension. The therapeutic benefits are endless for all ages. Kids have stress just like adults do, especially school-age children. Almost every kid in Vegas participates in some type of sport or physical activity. 
Therapy addresses many factors in that aspect. I also educate new parents on how to massage their newborns and the importance of the massage of newborns. Nonetheless, the endless services and additions for teens and adults and mothers-to-be, as well as spa parties for all ages and occasions. I want the opportunity to educate the Valley on the importance of family massage and provide a place for healthy and serene family bonding and a fun place for everybody. This particular office location is perfect for my vision. I have seen roughly 15 office spaces, but this one fits all of my needs. The build out exactly what I was in search of. It's close to my home and my daughter's school. The owners of the buildings are also family friends. It's right next to a family dentistry, which is a plus. I have done much work for this location, including building my website, printing ads, and preparing for my grand opening. I know I have three waivers to get approved. This practice will be a huge asset to families, to the residency, and it shouldn't be an issue. With my main target being children, the school is, no, is in no danger whatsoever. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the other establishments are totally different from my practice. I'm a full family practice. And to my knowledge, there isn't one yet here in Vegas. My other clientele include, but are not limited to, professional athletes of the NFL and NBA, boxers, runners of the Las Vegas Marathons, participants of the World Series of Poker, and a host of youth athletes who participate in the world in the USA Track and Field Association, Pop Warner Football, Soccer Leagues, and School Sports, amongst the host of other doctors, lawyers, waitresses, and many more. There are numerous amounts, <coughs> excuse me, of potential clientele awaiting the chance to become a part of my practice. I have a complete vision for this office space. I am a legit massage establishment, and any concerns should be alleviated. So I ask that you will please grant me the final action approval so that I can meet my deadlines I have already set in place. And the child care facilities that are around the area, I did have a chance to speak with them, the creative kids and kinder care, and they are all in approval of everything as well. Thank you. Okay. Um, this was advertised as a public hearing. Anybody here wish to speak on sign, please come forward. Good evening, Latoya Williams, 2316 Sapphire Valley Street. I am a client of Leslie Wilburn for over four years. I have, this, have been massaged by her many a time and have benefited greatly from the massage. And you don't I, look stressed at all. <laughs> that is good. I, like yourselves, work in front of computers throughout the day, and I find a lot of tension in my neck, shoulders, and back. And getting massaged by Ms. Wilburn also helps to alleviate that stress. I'm a single mother, and um, it's nice to be able to take my daughter with me to my massage appointments because sometimes the sitter is not always available, and being that this is a family practice, I will be able to take her there as opposed to some casinos and spas that aren't per se uh, family friendly because they don't have necessary either child care or a space that is safe for my child to be while I'm getting my appointments. So. I, I think this would be a great, a, a great asset to those, the Las Vegas Valley in providing education for massage. Thank you very much. Anybody else wish to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close public hearing. Uh, Ms. Wood, if I may? Commissioner Trump, please. Uh, could staff tell me where the school is that we're referring to that's within uh, 100 people in the school? And I think the applicant mentioned two. Are, are they in it's, close proximity? Um, it's only one. Well, actually, it's not in close proximity, but as far as the um, the property lines are concerned, yeah, no, it's no. on the opposite side of um, Durango, of Fort Apache. So it's not like close to my actual office, but as far as your property lines are concerned, it's... You're, you're separated by Fort Apache. Absolutely. Thank you. And for staff, um, the... The other establishments that um, they're within distance of, which do we, I didn't see a map showing what those were, but. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the, the map is up on the screen right now. Uh, the residential is immediately to the south. The church is to the west of the site across Fort Apache. And then the other massage establishment is Kitty Corner across Sahara and Fort Apache in the Village, uh, the Village Square Shopping Center. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Uh, if there's no other discussion, no other questions, 
I'd make a motion for approval to item number 29, special use permit 38886, uh, 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 approval subject to any conditions. Uh, there are none, so you're in the clean. Thank you. Is a motion for approval. Please cast your vote. Mr. Chairman, before the uh, vote is taken. Are, I'm taking it back to our conditions. Subject to the, subject to the conditions as submitted. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Evans? Uh, the maker of the motion. Commissioner Trowbridge, um, the, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, Ms. Uh, Wilburn, you seem like a, a fine, reputable massage therapist, and I appreciate that. And um, agree with you on the therapeutic benefits of massage. My only concern is, uh, you know, well, one, if, if the business were to be sold to someone less reputable, that's always an issue. But just uh, as an added uh, way to protect the public, would you consider, say, a one-year period of review administratively um, just to ensure that there are no problems? I would accept that as an additional condition. Thank you very much. And the applicant, you understand what we're asking for? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's a motion for approval. Please show the vote. So that condition would be that there shall be a, an administrative review one year after issuance of business license for the use. And that is approved. This will go to City Council on October 6th. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Have a good evening. Thank you. Now we're going to go to 25 through 27. Uh, we all good on our map? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we just need to note that the actual variance for the parking, it's still the same number. It's still three spaces, but the actual variance is 38 spaces, or 35 spaces where 38 are required. Mr. Can Chairman, you, Mr. Chairman, if I can add, uh, I think we can probably reasonably defend this against a challenge on open meeting law rules because uh, like the planning manager just told you, uh, what we're talking about is a difference of three spaces. One might argue that, hey, listen, uh, what was on the, the agenda was 35 or 37, and now you're going with 35. The fact of the matter is the difference in spaces is the number three. Either way you slice it, it's the number three. Uh, so I would advise the planning director that this is something we can reasonably defend. Okay. Commissioner Flingus. Mr. Chairman, once again, I'll make a motion on item number 25, VAR 38857, to approve, subject to the conditions. Thank you. That is approved, and that's final action in the absence of a... No, hold on. We want to dance on the city council. Oh, oh. Uh, the vote was done. I was just going. Yeah. All right. That motion is passed. Now to item number 26. Mr. Chairman, again, item number 26, VAR 38858. I would move to approve. Is also approved. And then, Mr. Chairman, item 27, SDR 38856. Again, I would move to approve subject to conditions. Cast your vote. And those are all final action uh, with, in the absence of an appeal within 10 days. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we go to item 30, SCP 38909, applicant Durango market owner MNLK LLC for a packaged liquor off sale establishment use within an existing 2,326 square foot general retail store at 6955 North Durango Drive. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the site currently contains a market with off-sale beer and wine. The applicant wishes to add liquor, 
The floor plans as submitted indicate that the liquors would be displayed behind the sales counter in approximately 48 square feet of counter space. Uh, the location does not have any churches, schools, child care facilities, or city parks within the required 400 foot distance separation. Uh, the proposed use will not increase the parking requirements for the subject site. The, uh, the request meets all mini minimum special use uh, permit requirements and can be conducted in a manner that is compatible and harmonious with the surrounding uses. As such, staff is recommending approval of this application. Please note we have received additional letters of support and protest since publication. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioners Nathan Taylor, Taylor Consulting Group representing the applicant. Uh, we do concur and agree with all the staff conditions and we request your approval. Uh, we're here to answer any questions. Thank you. This was advertised at public hearing. Anybody here wishes to speak on this item, please come forward. Seeing no one close public hearing, Mr. Chairman uh, Ellsworth. I need some explanation on this. First of all, was there a neighborhood meeting held on this? No, actually what happened, it, it's interesting, I, I do a lot of these uh, in the community and generally speaking the business owner uh, comes forward and, and wants to increase revenue with their convenience store and therefore they want to go from beer and wine to full liquor. Uh, this situation was, was quite interesting because the neighbors came to my client uh, requesting that they submit this application and I wasn't sure if this was part of the record. I'm not sure if staff had this petition. Um, I did submit it, but if it's not part of the record, I'd like to insert it tonight. It's got almost 400 residents that signed this requesting that my applicant uh, apply for this special use permit. Uh, therefore, that's why we're here today. All right, so you're saying you have a bunch of homeowners. Where are those homeowners located? They're located in the area uh, to the west um, of 95, uh, where these uh, special use permits, generally uh, speaking, have been approved. Now, when you originally got the, the, um, the application there, uh, you... I'm trying to refresh my memory. Did, you, did the applicant come in and say they would never sell alcohol at this location? Uh, to my knowledge, sir, uh, they never said that. Um, originally speaking, they did want this to be a liquor store. Uh, from what I understand, in speaking with my client, they had, they had decided originally uh, to make it a convenience store uh, with, uh, in the future, uh, going before you today as we are, uh, requesting it to be a packaged liquor store. See, I'm struggling with it because I, I, I've got a, my memory is that that this was never going to be uh, alcohol sales. My memory was there was a strong opposition to this by homeowners back, and that's why we went without any alcohol to begin with. Uh, and now you're coming in saying without a without a neighborhood meeting, but with some kind of a petition. And I don't know, I've not seen it. I didn't see the back of it. Maybe I missed it. Um, and so I. I and now you're telling me otherwise, I, I, so I'm struggling with it. I, I don't know. I don't know where to go with this because, quite frankly, I don't trust most applicants um, because they, they come in and they misrepresent things. They want to paint things in the best light for themselves. Uh, and I would much rather see you have a, a, a neighborhood meeting. Then we know. Then we really know what the what the neighbors are saying, as opposed to, well, I cherry pick these ones. Are you saying it's over 400? Yeah, the, the uh, actually signature right there, Commissioner. Can you take a look at that, please. Thank you. And Commissioner, if I, if I may, um, with all due respect, this is my, my first time representing the applicant um, at this location, and I can tell you, uh, that, that, you know, I'll give you my word that I would not represent an applicant uh, that would misrepresent anything before this board uh, or the city council, and that I live in that neighborhood, and uh, I, I obviously, um, you know, frequent the stores, frequent the, the convenience stores, um, and, uh, you know, the office depot that's across the street, and uh, of the residents and my neighbors that I have spoke with, um, they, ha they have all said they're in support of this as well. Um, and this is in the town center plan. And um, like I said, we do accept, accept staff's recommendation for approval um, that this does comply with uh, staff's conditions. Well, don't take my comments about mistrusting a personal. It's not oh, personal to oh, you. Oh, no, I don't. I'm just uh, these owners. clarifying. I've just been doing this long <laughs> enough to I realize mm, no, I there's always two sides to I that, understand. that story. While we're waiting, uh, may I ask a question for sure. you, Mr. Chair, if you mind? Um, and maybe staff can help me with this. This is a, a mixed-use uh, designation. Is there residential above the store? Um, I, I think staff can answer can answer that. This I know was a very unique project when it was first built, Directly and I do I do believe that um, adjacent or behind it there there is a uh, a community. I think they are condos, if I remember correctly. But it's it's a, a store front on a ground level, and there is 
residential. It's a two-story with something above it. That, that's correct. Residential. That is, that is correct. Yes. Okay. That's what I miss about New York City. I could go right downstairs. Would and you still right below continue me. to be a market, or would you be a packaged liquor store? Uh, is there any indication about how much of your square footage would be devoted to packaged liquor and how much to grocery items? And, and I, I believe that I had addressed that uh, when speaking with staff, and they can they can correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, one of the things that I had discussed with the uh, w with the owner, the applicant, uh, and, and also being a neighbor myself, was that. Uh, they keep the the, the liquor, um, the hard liquor per se, uh, behind the counter, um, and, and I thought that that met, that met, you know met for better aesthetics, um, better security, um, and allowing uh, also to you know. But is there a percentage of the square footage designated for liquor and beer, and some for? Will you still maintain grocery items? Do you have produce? Is there? What, what else is there's, there's not, no that I'm, not that I'm opposed to yeah, that. Yeah, there's no produce, and I don't remember um, if, if staff can, can help me out. I, I don't think, were we restricted, uh, were, we supposed to, were we supposed to be restricted with the grocery that we currently have in there? Because I know we don't have any produce, we don't, we don't sell any food. Uh, this is an application for a packaged liquor license. There is no restriction. Uh, at this point, the application could be for an entire liquor store. Okay, but currently it's a market, right? And there are no liquor sales there now, right? Just beer and wine. Beer and wine. What else do they sell other than beer and wine? Chips, candy, things like that. Um, the, ap the applicant did say that they, they, they did want to cut okay. back and on the some of the I grocery. Ask, it's not that I'm opposed to a liquor store, but I'd like to call it what it is. Right. When you say you miss New York, when you go into these stores. Well, I was born and raised here, but I, I was there for two years. Okay, but <laughs> wherever. I mean, you, you go into these places, and I think the intention Unless you want to be, you know, a liquor store, which again I'm okay with if if that's what it is intended to be. But you, when you, my vision of the mixed use and and a grocery kind of thing is where you go in and there's a flower stand outside, a newsstand, a shoe shine. You can go in and get some good apples and some fresh produce and and uh, and and maybe a great selection of wine and a, and a Grey Goose vodka and some terrific tequila. And, but if you want to be a liquor store, I think it's important that because if, if the commissioner's representation and his institutional memory is what I think it is, I'm curious about what this originally was approved for and if now we're morphing into something else. Those are my questions and concerns. If, if I may, just on one yes, question. The, the backup shows that in, on December 1st of 04, a package liquor sales SUP was approved by the city council um, at an adjacent suite, but was never exercised. So that's my recollection. As well. I'm sorry. I said now I remember that. That did not okay. let you mention that. <laughs> so there was um, package liquor previously approved in, in uh, the at the end of 04 at this building. Uh, again, this was advertised public hearing. Let's go ahead and uh, see Thank if there's any Todd comments. Thank you, Parlock, 240 North, 19th Street. Commissioner Evans, I want to take you back a long, long time when the, the project of Town Center was first proposed. If, if you remember, and, and Chairman Truesdale, you too, if you remem remember, it was supposed to be high density with living areas above the the, uh, above the, the businesses and that, and it got away from that. But what, what I think is that this, what he was, is proposing with, with the residential above, is what town center was actually proposed to be. It got away from that, but, but I just want to go back to, to the original. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else wishing to speak, seeing no one close public hearing? Uh, I have one question for you, but do, do, do you have any opposition to help holding a, a um, neighborhood meeting? I believe we've reached out to the neighbors. Um, and, and no, that's not what I asked. I asked do you have opposition to, because this has been on our agenda several times, and you guys keep pulling it off. This is about the fourth time I've seen it, and it's been pulled off each time, and it makes me scratch my head. I, I don't know what's going on. I can't get my hands on it, and I don't like it. That's why I'm saying, look, if, 
If, if you're legitimate and you, those 400 signatures are real, and I have a reason to believe, I'm not a handwriting expert, but I got a reason to believe many of those are written by the same person. Um, but if you're, if you're legitimate and it really is, then really you need to, to have a hold a neighborhood meeting. Let the neighbors come in and really voice their opinion. Because I got to believe there's some people out there watching this right now saying, wait a minute, I didn't sign that thing. I don't know what they're talking about. So do you have any opposition to holding it in, until you have a neighborhood meeting? Commissioner, can I, can I address your concern? You, you, you mentioned that it was ripped off the agenda. And, and yes, it was twice. Um, reason being the property owners located in California um, we had a problem with the application and staff can uh, can attest to this uh, with them getting the form on the application properly notarized uh, in California by the landowner. That is the only reason why the application was ever pulled off the agenda. Um, I, I, I just want to clarify that and uh, as far as being legitimate, you know, I represent a lot of business owners in this town, uh, mainly small business owners. And I can tell you that uh, being born and raised here and being involved in my community the way I have um, over the past 35 years, I can tell you that I would never represent a business owner before this commission or any other board in this state uh, that was not legitimate. And I will tell you that we have worked very, very hard over, I believe, almost a six-month period on this application myself, um, as well as the, the business owner and the landowner. And um, do, I, do I have to have um, you know, a neighborhood meeting? I believe I've had several with neighbors having lived in the area. And, uh, and therefore, uh, Commissioner, I believe that, that we've met all of the conditions um, for the area and uh, that this is a, uh, quote, legitimate application. So is your answer no or yes? Yes, of course I would, I would have a neighborhood meeting. We've had several where we've reached out to neighbors who, have, who live in the area. Well, then, because then, I can't support it as it is. There's too many unknown variables here that I just can't support. It. But I, what I will say is, if you're willing to take it for 30 days or, or however long it would take, and I refer to Director Wheeler, hold a neighborhood meeting. That's going to give me the comfort level that, all right, all right, we're, we're, we're there. The neighbors really are in support of this. Uh, I don't want to throw something up in the neighbors, though, without them really having their opportunity to be heard from you or directly from the applicant. So are, are, will you be agreeable to a 30-day? And, and Commissioner, uh, Director, would it be 30 days? Yeah. September 23rd. And through you, Mr. Chairman, would, and also would you personally invite us to come to the meeting as well? I would invite you, uh, Commissioner, to come to any meeting that I have. Thank you. So will you be comfortable with that? Yes, Commissioner, I'd be comfortable with that. Okay. So that would be my motion. All right. There's a motion to hold this for 30 days to allow the applicant to Thank hold you. a uh, neighborhood meeting. Uh, if there are no other comments or questions, please cast your vote. And that is approved, uh, and we look forward to seeing you back. Thank you. September um, 23rd. Now we come to item 31. SDR 38854, applicant Smith Center, owner city of Las Vegas, for a proposed 60,000 square foot museum private with waivers of the Symphony Park screening and architectural design standards at the northwest corner of Clark Avenue and City Parkway. Mr. Chair and members of the commission, the application that you have before you is an amendment to a previously approved site plan the applicant is proposing to construct a three-story children's museum in place of what had originally been proposed to be a small performance hall on the west side of the Smith Center for the Performing Arts. The application requires three waivers from the Symphony Park design standards, one for screening of mechanical equipment, the second for the percentage of glazing at the sidewalk level, and then the third for the height of the entrance canopy over the sidewalk. The application has been reviewed by the Symphony Park Design Review Committee and they have recommended approval of all three waivers as does staff. There is an issue relative to the parking. The applicant had proposed to construct a parking structure immediately to the south of the Children's Museum. However, they're not ready to go forward with that application at this point in time. It still requires review by the Design Review Committee. So in place of the parking structure going together with this proposal, we have a condition of approval that does require them to provide parking either on site or else off site parking uh, prior to the construction of the building. Finally, there was an issue with the design review committee relative to the proposed elevation of the building. While it does uh, comply with the massing and the materials requirements of the Symphony Park design review standards, 
Uh, they were looking for a little bit more playfulness with the elevation. The applicant has submitted a letter to us which was included in your backup materials that were distributed at the beginning of the meeting where they commit to uh, have some type of a graphics and sign package that will address the concerns of the design review committee. With that, staff recommends approval of this request. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioners, uh, Director Wheeler, Myron Martin. I'm the president of the Smith Center for the Performing Arts, 241 West Charleston. Uh, a, lot's, uh, a lot's happened in the last few years since you uh, approved the, uh, the Smith Center for Construction. Uh, as Mr. Fagg said, we, uh, we, we did take the small hall out of our program and we immediately looked for the right uh, community asset to bring onto the Smith Center block and we are thrilled uh, to have what was what is currently known as the Lead Children's Discovery Museum as our new partner, uh, bringing what will be a truly uh, uh, wonderful asset to our community uh, and to our Smith Center block. Uh, the, the comment about the parking, uh, we will be back with you very shortly. In fact, uh, uh, as recently as just a couple of hours ago, I saw a, a design for our parking garage, 400, approximately 400 spaces that will be on our block. Uh, more than enough to support the Children's Museum and some other things uh, on our block. Um, I, I have to say while I'm in front of you how proud we are of what's happened in Symphony Park and at the Smith Center. We are on time and on budget. Uh, we're in month 15 of construction and uh, we will open to the public in March of 2012 and we thank uh, you for your support. We, we uh, ask that you follow staff's recommendation for approval. Thank you. This was advertised at a public hearing. Anybody here wish to speak on the side and please come forward. Seeing no one close the public hearing. Okay, sure. Mr. Chairman, I have an uh, abstention on this item. Um, one of the project managers on the Smith Center, um, her daughter is actually my intern this summer. Her last day is tomorrow, but out of abundance of caution, I'll go ahead and abstain. Uh, Commissioner Evans. I don't have comments. Uh, or any issues with this, uh, others may want to speak, but I just briefly wanted to say that I think I think I speak for many when I when I say how proud we are that this whole structure and the Symphony Park and the Smith Center is coming together, and what a great asset that will be for our community. So I appreciate this. We'll see my my overwhelming support. Thank you. And um, I'd like to just actually thank. Uh, the Smith Center. I think uh, I've been involved with the Children's Museum in its original inception and the original building on their current site. If, for those who don't know, the Children's Museum is one of the, the finest in, in this country. It's uh, at one time it was the fourth largest. Um, it is the, one of the best kept secrets in downtown uh, for what they do and they program for kids. And this is just a great location for it. It'll help, uh, Help, will help the, the Symphony Park continue to grow and prosper and and provide all that diversity uh, that we all wish to have downtown. And uh, I will support this. And again, I, I think it's a great, great thing to have them combined. Thank you. Commissioner Jordan. Uh, I'm certainly going to come out and support this project. Uh, but I do have simply one question. And, and the elimination of the small performance theater, has that resulted in the elimination of the rehearsal hall? No. Uh, th okay, thank you, Commissioner. We, thank we, you. Um, uh, the original plan for the Smith Center, uh, I, I won't expect that you will recall that because it was quite a few years back when we were in front of you, but the original plan called for four per uh, performance spaces. The large hall, uh, a rehearsal space, a studio theater, a cabaret theater, and then this one that we eventually cut out, a 650-seat theater, which was originally built primarily for the Nevada Ballet Theater. The Nevada Ballet, after we did all the designs, came to the conclusion that if they were going to get to the next level artistically and, and uh, in other ways uh, successfully, that they needed to perform in the large hall, the 2050-seater. And without having that uh, critical mass in that 650-seat theater, we couldn't find a need for it. We couldn't support uh, what was then a $70 million building uh, without any tenants. And that's the reason why we took it out of our building program and started looking for a better use. And, and we, we couldn't have found a better use than this children's museum. 
Thank you. Uh, if there are no other comments, motion? I'd, I'd be Thank happy you. to make the motion. <coughs> motion for approval following staff's recommendation. There's a motion for approval. Please cast your vote. Along with whatever the conditions were that you had discussed, Mr. Fagg. All of the conditions are in place. Yes. Thank you. And Mr. Mr. Martin said that you're in agreement with him as well. Yes, sir. Thank you. And that is approved with uh, Commissioner Goins abstaining, and that is final action in the absence of any appeal. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Congratulations. Good luck. Thanks very much. We'll see you soon When's it in open that again? parking garage. When's it open again? March of 2012. Thank you. Now we go to item 32, SDR 3885, applicant owner, Fairway Chevrolet Company for the addition of a 32,667 square foot floor area chain link and site modifications to an existing motor vehicle sales <coughs> new establishment with a waiver of the perimeter landscaping buffer requirements to allow zero feet on the south per perimeter where five feet was previously approved at 3100 and 3222 East Sahara Avenue. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting to demolish 4,000, I mean 44,235 square feet of existing floor area and add back 76,902 square feet uh, for a net gain of 32,667 square feet and modernize the existing building facades. Uh, and it, their request is to do this in three phases. Uh, staff notes that the site is currently sparsely landscaped. Uh, several palm trees are proposed within the parking lot and adjacent to the new buildings and on the perimeter landscaped area. As the site could be improved to meet current code conditions, uh, but is not designed with this intent, staff is recommending denial of the site plan due to the lack of landscaping. If the request is denied, the site will remain as currently configured. Please note we have received additional letters of support since publication. Oh, and staff has, if approved, condition revisions. Let me read those in. Uh, condition number two. Uh, revise the section to, for landscape plan to read as follow. Landscape plan date stamped uh, 8 24 uh, Condition number four to be uh, revised to read an exception from Title 1910.010J is hereby approved to allow 12, 12 trees and two interior parking lot landscape islands where 25 trees and six interior islands are required. Uh, and then condition number seven to indicate that the landscape plan is date stamped 82410. Uh, uh, delete the section of condition number eight that reads the technical landscape plan shall include the following changes for the conceptual landscape plan. Eight new palm trees having a mi minimum height of 15 feet from the ground at the top of the front shall be located within the parking lot planners adjacent to Sahara Avenue. Uh, that is because uh, they have uh, conformed to that already. Uh, item number 10 to be revised to read mechanical equipment, air conditioners, and trash areas shall be fully screened and views from abutting streets for any new construction. Uh, item 13, a master sign plan shall be submitted to the City of Las Vegas for approval prior to the issuance of any sign permits for any additional signage. And item 15, a uh, to be revised to read as follows, a comprehensive construction staging plan for each phase shall be submitted to the Planning and Development Department for review and approval prior to the issuance of any building permits for that phase. The construction staging plan shall include the following information, design and location of construction trailers, design and location of construction fencing, all proposed temporary construction signage, location of materials and staging areas, and the location and design of parking for all construction workers. And uh, staff, uh, planning staff notes that uh, uh, Public Works has a change to uh, one of their conditions. And that would be condition number 18. We'd like to add the following sentence. This condition. My name. Can you help me with that? Uh, You've Bart been so Anderson, quiet Public tonight. Works. <laughs> Bart Anderson, Public Works. Uh, condition number 18, we'd like to add the following sentence to the end of the existing condition. This condition shall not be enforced if a media modification in Sahara Avenue eliminates left turn movements out from this driveway. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. Uh, Gary Leobold, on behalf of Aptus Group, 1200 South 4th Street. I have with me tonight uh, Kristen Newman, who's also with Aptus, and Greg Heinrichs, who's the property owner, and uh, they'll be available in case you have questions of them. Uh, I'd just firstly like to say that uh, I really appreciate staff's effort in working with us over the last several days to 
uh, address uh, points that we had raised with the conditions and we're, uh, we're now fully in support of the revised conditions as you have it before you. Um, I, I won't go into a, a lengthy presentation as I think they did a good job on the staff report putting that together. It is a phased project. Uh, I can go into detail on the phases if you have any questions on that. Uh, but basically the improvements that are being done on the site are as a result of uh, General Motors uh, essential brand elements uh, improvement program where they're funding uh, GM dealerships around the country to improve brand recognition and, and do updates to the uh, dealership infrastructure. Uh, we, would, um, we would like to state that uh, these improvements are really going to improve the appearance of this property which is a major anchor at the uh, east end of Sahara uh, and uh, generally in that area uh, make improvements uh, uh, for that area. Um, and uh, that because of the timing uh, requirements uh, associated with the improvement program, we would ask that if you consider approval of this project, uh, that it be a final action tonight, allowing us to pull our permits by mid-October at the latest. Thank you, and we're available to have any, uh, answer any questions. Thank you. Have. This was advertised at public hearing. Is there anybody here who wishes to speak on this item? Thank you. Todd Farley, 240 North 19th Street. And as one of Fairway's best customers of the parts department, I would like to see some trees out there. Well, if you put trees, people won't go in the sales office. <laughs> uh, for the city attorney, do we have to abstain since we all own General Motors? <laughs> you really want to answer that? The uh, seeing no one uh, here will close public hearing. Uh, you're in agreement with all the staff's uh, Conditions, revised conditions. That we are. Um, it's a, it's a great. It's always been a dealership, and down there, and it's. Uh, I'm glad you're improving and putting money back into that area. I will support it. Uh, is there any other comments or a motion? Mr. Chairman, any comments? Mr. Chairman, I'll move to uh, 2009 Chevy <laughs> Extreme bought from your place. 230,000 miles is still going strong. Um, and I'm proud to make a motion for approval of staff staff's recommendations and condition. Before, before you make the motion, if I may, I, I just wanted to also say I appreciate you working with staff. And my thinking is at the end of the day, it's going to be a much better site. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Farlow mentioned uh, he wanted to see trees and we'll get uh, 12 Mexican pan, uh, fan palm trees. Uh, at 15 feet in height, um, and I think uh, I, I think as it's phased in, it'll be a good thing for that area. East Sahara, I think, concerns all of us in that we have a number of closed dealerships down there. We have some struggling businesses, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're even looking at expanding the redevelopment area to little parcels in and throughout that area because of the. Um, the economy and so this will see my support as well and I thank you very much I, I think uh, uh, again at the end of the day it's going to be a much better project and I wish you all the luck in the world thank you thank you thank you there, for sure. there's a motion for approval if there are no other comments please cast your vote And that is approved, and that's final action in the absence of an appeal. Thank you very much. Good evening. Now will we go to item 33, director's business, DAR 38898, applicant owner, City of Las Vegas. Update on long-range planning items. Uh, good evening, chairman and commissioners. Uh, my name is Andy Reed. I'm from the Planning and Development Department. Um, and tonight I'm going to be providing a brief update regarding the planning department's efforts to coordinate the 2020 master plan with the city's capital improvement plan. Next slide, please. Effective community planning is a process which requires coordination between the following four components. A master plan, which is a comprehensive plan for the physical, social, and environmental development of the city. A zoning ordinance, which establishes land use and building requirements for property within the city to meet the objectives of the master plan, a subdivision ordinance which establishes standards for the division of, in, division of land into lots for development by encouraging well-planned, efficient, and attractive layouts of lots and streets, 
and a capital improvement plan referred to as a CIP, which is the financial timetable for community investments. Capital improvements often include such things as sewer lines, roadways, government facilities, and parks or recreational facilities. Next slide, please. In order to ensure that the goals, policies, and objectives of the master plan are met, in 2005, the Planning and Development Department created the Master Plan and Capital Improvement Plan integration, integration document. This document is intended to follow the five-year Capital Improvement Plan to show progress related to the Master Plan, the Zoning Ordinance, and the Subdivision Ordinance. Next slide, please. In the report that we provided to you in your backup tonight, uh, it provides information regarding 170 capital improvement plan projects and describes their relationship to the appropriate 2020 master plan goals, policies, or objectives. Staff has reviewed those projects and has determined whether they are complete, in progress, ongoing, or not complete. Examples of projects considered as complete include the establishment of a trail connection between the cultural corridor and the downtown area. Projects considered to be in progress include the construction of public improvements to Las Vegas Boulevard north of US 95. Projects considered to be ongoing include the determination of suitable locations for landscape medians, areas, and public places in downtown. Projects considered to be not complete include the development of a pedestrian and bike route throughout the West Las Vegas area to be integrated into regional bike and pedestrian plans. But in regard to that item, staff has started preliminary work related to the development of a walkable community plan to be located within a portion of West Las Vegas. Next slide, please. And that concludes my presentation. Uh, this is an informational update, so no votes required. Uh, but I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. This was advertised as a public hearing. Anybody wish to speak on this item, please feel free to come forward. Seeing no one close the public hearing. Uh, since there's no action required, we, we, we appreciate your update, and we look forward to future updates as we go forward. Thank you. I want to take a moment right now to uh, uh, let Commissioner Ellsworth make a few comments. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have had some good changes recently in my, in my uh, family life, which requires that I resign from my position on the commission. I've talked this over with uh, Councilman Ross, and uh, I, uh, it, 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 is, it is the right thing for me to do. Um, so I wanted to thank everyone here. I've greatly appreciated working with all of you. You've done a wonderful job. Uh, you've been friendly, kind, supportive, and I, I greatly thank you. I, it's a bitter pill for me to swallow. Um, uh, you know, I think I, I sent an email to, to most of the, the commissioners here, I believe, and, or all of them, I think. I, I, I hope I didn't miss anyone. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but uh, but uh, we, we, uh, we, moved my, our, we moved our family uh, out of Las Vegas, so uh, it wouldn't be wise for me to... Uh, continue to serve here, and I have. Um, I've told uh, uh, Councilman Ross I'll serve until he uh, uh, finds a replacement. I do solo my home here, uh, and uh, I do intend to. Uh, I still will work here. Uh, it's just that we will commute. I'll be commuting a bit. But anyway, thank you, thank you all, staff. I appreciate it. Appreciate all you getting done, uh, and obviously the fellow commissioners and even Todd Farlow. Thank you. I can say on behalf of the, the commission and all the staff here, uh, we've appreciated all that you've done and all the effort and time you put in and uh, you've represented uh, the constituents of, of the various wards very well and, and we appreciate all that work. Thank you. Thank you. Now we go to that, we go to that time of the evening called uh, citizens participation. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the Planning Commission. No subject may be acted upon by the Planning Commission unless the subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, come to the podium and give your name for the record and make short Thank comments. you. Todd Farlock, 240 North 19th Street. And first of all, the peanut gallery 
has appreciated all that you've done, Commissioner Ellsworth. God bless you. I'm here to register a big disappointment, and this is a problem that we're going to have. For 14 years that I know of, the city had strived to make owner-occupied housing a priority, simply because when housing is owner-occupied, Metro has much less problems with crime, the people are the neighborhoods are, are kept up better, et cetera, et cetera. It goes on and on. We've been through this before. But right now, in this economic meltdown that we've had, what's happening is that the only people that have any money are the big rental corporations, and they're buying up all the properties left and right. And so, basically, 14 years that I know of, of of hard work is just being flushed down the drain, and I, you know, and I, I'm real concerned about that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? Uh, seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Meetings adjourned. <laughs>